What's cooler than a little chainsword? A giant chainsword, all printed in one piece. I recently backed the Creality CR30 belt printer on Kickstarter, just because I love new technology. And, well, it's not the first belt printer, it's definitely the first mainstream one. The advantage that a belt printer has over a normal bed printer is that it can print infinitely on one axis, so you could print infinitely long objects. I'm sure you can instantly see what advantages this could have for a lot of stuff in our hobby. I've had so many ideas for this thing and I really didn't know where to start. So I decided to start simple and print out a Primaris Intercessor Chainsword just to test the capabilities of the machine. So now that you've been introduced to the machine, let's get started. Now I will caveat all this to say that I don't think I've levelled the bed as well as I could have. I used a massive raft to help with some bed adhesion issues that I had, coupled with a really slow print speed. All these are learning experiences and the next time I do it, it'll be far better. I could have printed both halves of the chainsword and then PLA welded them together so that it would make one big chainsword, but I actually want to mount this on my wall once it's all finished, so that's why I've only done half of it. My neighbourhood watch aren't really fans of grimdark vigilantes, so I don't think I'd really have any use for a full chainsword. To make the actual chainsword, I did a bit of measuring on an actual intercessor chainsword, and I broke it down into the length of the blade, or the chainsaw bit, and the hilt. I then popped into Fusion 360 and started modelling the rough shapes with the correct dimensions. It was actually a lot easier than I expected. The blade was just a simple box with a fillet along the cutting edge and a large chamfer along the back and the teeth were triangles, extruded up to give them some volume. I thought the handle would be tricky, but I just used a cylinder, cut circles out of that, gave all the new edges chamfers, then extruded another cylinder through the middle of the handle. Easy peasy. The part that did take me longer than expected was the vent at the base of the chainsaw bit. In the end, I used two circles joined with the lines down the side, then created an offset plane at an angle to the original sketch. On this plane, I did the same. Two circles joined by lines to mimic the same shape, but I made it slightly smaller and tapered at one end. I then used a loft modifier to connect the two shapes and give me the shape that I wanted. I used the top face of this new object as my new sketch plane and used the offset function to make a smaller version of this shape, which I then pushed into the object to hollow it out. I used the bottom face inside the object to sketch a few boxes, which I extruded a few millimetres to look like the usual chainsword vent, so that would be the grill inside the vent. It's not perfect, but it looks good enough for me. As I say, this is a test, it's not meant to be absolutely perfect, it's just meant to look good enough. It might seem quite complicated to model your own chainsword, but it really wasn't. I built up the chainsword just using extruded shapes, fillets and chamfers, and as long as you take it one piece at a time, it's really pretty easy to get the look you want. Plus it's fun and really rewarding to make something like this yourself and see the final result printed out. I'm not going to lie, I did eyeball a few of the measurements, and while it's not perfect, it's a really good start. Let me know if you have any interest in me doing a full step-by-step -step tutorial in how I achieved this, and I will do one if enough people want it. Because I'm a beginner with Fusion 360, well, not quite a beginner, but I've used it for a while but not consistently. I had a bit of trouble exporting my chainsword model to an STL with the high enough quality, high enough polygon count. You could quite clearly see the polygon faces on my first few prints, which wasn't acceptable because I wanted a really smooth uh, finish on it. It turns out my mistake was using the cloud exporter for Fusion 360, which takes an age anyway, as it doesn't let you tweak the quality settings for the exported file. The proper way to do it is to click the top title in the Project Explorer on the left of Fusion 360 and save as STL. This allows you to change the resolution of the final object to your liking. If you're used to using a nice modern slicer, even a modern version of Cura, then the Cura built slicer software will seem familiar but limited. I dragged my newly created STL into the Cura built slicer, oriented it properly and made sure it was the right scale. Because I wanted this to print in one piece and the handle width is a limiting factor, I chose to print it out to 80 centimetres long. It's not going to be the correct size for an 8 foot transhuman warrior, but it's fine for a 6 foot 2 unathletic shut-in hobbyist. Infill was set at 10%, which gives a good balance between sturdiness and print time, and infill was set to the grid pattern. On to printing, I had a few failures, mainly due to my failure to export the model correctly, and one bizarre layer shift that I can't really explain. But once it got going, this thing just powered through. It took 75 hours, which is mainly due to my very low print speed and the fact that I used a raft, but it's also due to the fact that I was printing out a big-ass sword. 
as I said before, as I get more used to the printer, I get more used to the slicer, new slicer software will come out, then I can get that time right down. It's all about confidence in your printer, and at the moment I'm not very confident in it, so that's why my print speed's so low. I had to change the filament near the end of the print, because I was going to bed and it would have run out during the night, and that can cause all sorts of issues. So I hot swapped in a new roll, and apart from the different colour, it was absolutely fine. The advantage of using the different colour is you can actually see how the printer prints out, so you can see the 45 degree angle in the print, which is pretty cool. If you get the hot swap wrong, sometimes you can cause under extrusion because you've not got enough filament in the tube, but that didn't happen this time, thankfully. Let it be a lesson. If you're going to print something big, just use a new roll of filament. It's much easier than swapping about. So here it is. I'll just take the raft off. There we go. Now I think this turned out really well, as well as it could with my limited design. There are a few rough bits on the chainsaw teeth and a few gaps and things like that, but that'll be all sorted when I get my slicer profile sorted out. Bear in mind that this would have to be printed in at least three pieces on a large bed printer. There are a few curled edges which are entirely my fault. It was quite stuffy in the room I was printing in, so stupidly I opened a window and that introduced drafts. Now, I didn't know if drafts would affect the belt printer the same way it does with a bed printer, but it caused the plastic to cool unevenly and that's why it's curled up. So another lesson learned, I won't do that the next time. So what does the future hold for the CR30 and Warhammer? Well, quite a lot. I don't want to reveal too much, but I'm not going to let this modern marvel sit idle. I'll be painting the chainsaw up for a future video, but I'd also like to hear what weapons of renown you might like to see in 3D, because if enough people want them, I'll have a crack at making them. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see what else this thing can do, then please consider liking and subscribing. I appreciate each and every person that takes time to watch one of my videos. So, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.